Hi Youtubers, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're gonna try to touch up a uh, spodumene, a kunzite. And since this is the first time that I do it in my life, since I'm cutting 17 years, uh, we're gonna find out if I'm gonna only touch up the top or all around to make it new, or otherwise to change completely the cutting to have much more sparkle from the material. We're gonna find that, that out slowly, slowly working it. Because I don't know how, how difficult it might be with my technology, right? with my equipment. Okay, so stick around and see what's going to happen. Yeah, this is the stone. It's not that big, but as you can see, it's quite worn. It wasn't well cut from the beginning. You see fish eye. That means that the bottom angles, especially, are too shallow, and the light just goes through it instead of bouncing back to your eye. That's called bad, bad faceting, and uh, most of the times from the east is like that, from India, from China, it's like that, because they tend to keep it big, despite the beauty. Okay, we're gonna try to touch these up first on the top, and if it's not too difficult, we're gonna modify it completely. It shouldn't be that difficult. It's just that, that I heard funny stories about polishing it. Let's see, I don't want to lose too much time with it because it's not my stone, it's from a customer, so if, it's, uh, if it takes too much time to, to touch up, then it's not being worth my while. It's not going to be worth my while to do this. Okay, let's see. So, I set it on the top, as usual, as you can see from my other videos. And as you can see, it's quite worn between the facets and the meeting joints. Let me try to see if I can get good focus on it. Yeah. But this is not what worries me. What worries me is this chip on the girdle, which can uh, actually discloses you the, the cleavage plane it's in that direction. Because Kunzite splits like a topaz perfectly. So let's go. First, I have to reduce this, so I will have to gain a bit of space on the girdle to refacet this feather there. So let's give it a try. Now I put the gemstone at 90 degrees. I will touch first the girdle. And what I do every time before starting any job is that I thank the Lord for everything that we receive every day and I ask Him also to protect me and to guide my hand. Always in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we can start now. Start the machine. Do it right back with some water. I'm gonna put some water into the dripper. Right. So let me take out a bit of first to remove a bit of wax here it went on the glue. Second, so there is a bit of wax which covers the dirt, the dirt. So it bulges up. I removed it in the way that now the, the line of the girdle is free to touch the lap. I'm going very soft with the stone, so I'm using a fine lap. This is a 600 lap. Because the stone is very soft and it's very delicate as well. So on a 96 dial, is, let's say it's 5 minus 5, so it's 91, 5. Let's see. Let me change the visual, otherwise, you don't see anything. Yeah, still here, see that? So let's go back. 
65. No, 91. 5 is the opposite side. Just a little bit more because there are some uh, little cracks just at the corner there. You see that? There are some cracks still there, visible. Just get a bit more. But now I think it's marginal, it can be lefty. You know, if you leave the inclusions next to the girdle, once the stone will be set in a jewel, you will not find it. You will not see it anymore. So I think that's fine. Um, yeah, let's go all around. Because, you know, when you touch up a stone, you're going to make sure that whatever you do on the left, you do it on the right, usually. Especially if you work on the on the girdle, and what you do on the top, you do on the bot at the bottom too. So we're gonna touch this up all around. So now you got a two. You see the new facets. Can you see them? This is. On five, and this is number one. The extremes. Now we're going to do the same at the opposite direction, the opposite side. Which is 43. And 53. Okay. There you go. Then there, and then there. Now let's see the overall shape of the stone, how it became. You see, since I did it on both sides, the shape doesn't bother that much, even if the, the stone was skewed from the beginning, as you can see. But we continue now making the other facets on the girdle to make it, to get, to get it equal and round. Alright. Okay, so now I can show you what I did. You see? I did all these facets together there. I don't know if you can see it properly. What I'm going to do, I decided, is that as usually as I do, as I gain a bit of thickness on the girdle, I'm not going to retouch the whole top or cut everything on the top. What I'm going to do is just I make some new facets here to lower the girdle at the same level of the previous one. So once I do a little facet here, it's, I'm going to bring this down to, to meet the facet on the other side, see? And once that's done, I can touch up the top. So, I'm gonna make only a few facets at the girdle to make the girdle flat again. And I'll just limit myself on touching up the top to remove the scratches. Okay, so I'll keep it very low. Um, the angles of the girdle, I want to keep it like 60 degrees. No, let's make it 70 even, because it's going to be just little facets that the girdle. And I'm going to change even the disc 
because they're so small that I can go straight with the pre, pre polish. You know. So now we are at 70 degrees. I'm just gonna go back to the same place that I did at the girdle. 591 and blah blah blah. Let me see here with my naked eye. What are the camera going between? See that? I went over here. I even went a little bit over. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Camera in between, I went over, but that's the point. <laughs> We're gonna do a little touch up with the girl later on. I continue with the rest. Okay. Tough job with the camera in between. Let's see now. You know, I'm going to give that 60 degrees in 70. See that? This one. This one. Yeah. This facet here. Yeah. New facet which matches a bit. Which matches over the other one at the corner. And the other one too. See that? It's this one here on the tip. Yeah, this one here. I'll do all for the other ones as well. And I come back to you now. To show you, I'm done. I just did new facets next to the girdle. And they're so marginal and so steep that um, very unlikely it will be seen once the stone is done. I want to keep the, the girdle high in the way that I can gain some material, some angles at the bottom. Uh, maybe I, I better the, the spot in the stone. I'll do the same thing on the other side now, and I'll show you the final result. Okay, both sides. You see, they are so marginal, so next to the guru. Uh, once I polished and the stone is going to be finished, very unlikely you're going to see any difference or the new facets on the on the guru. But the chip is gone. That's what the most important thing is. So let's go polish. I'm curious to see the way it polishes. Because everybody says that it's difficult and frustrating. People, I heard people, cutters, that they just throw at the end. They're so frustrated that they even throw the, 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 the stone at the wall. <laughs> because maybe it chips or it has a problem while it's almost finished. So let's see. Let's slam the polish. This is a thin lap. I might be unorthodox. Well, my use, my ways for cutting or polishing not conventional, I don't care. I do what suits me to have a good polish and quick. It has to be quick, I can't waste time. So, I go with some uh, car lubricant, spray lubricant, show you. Whatever the number, whatever the, the name it is. Something which lubricates, cleans, protects, uh, repels H2O and rust penetrant, whatever it is. I clean up. There is already a diamond in there. Uh, let's see. Let's see the way it polishes. 
I use a calm spinning usually. Okay. Let me show you. So it polishes very quickly. Very quickly. The facet I polished, I don't know if you can see it, I'm gonna indicate it now for you. Is that one there? I see that one. The new facet I made. Uh, it wasn't difficult at all. So if it goes so fast, I'm just gonna change completely the cut of this gemstone. Because I don't like it at all. So let's go for the next ones. Okay. It literally took me seven minutes to fight it all, to polish them all. You can see the, the facets next to the gold. Yeah, they're not all the same because the stone is not straight. So there is a part of the stone on top which is higher than the other. But as you can see, I'll show you from the top. The cuts that I made, even like this, they don't disturb the overlook the look of the stone. Yeah. You know, it'll be fine, I'll show you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm try I'll try to repolish the facet as they are. It will take me more time than cut it from the scratch, but I don't just want to keep the top as it is and I will have the bottom. Hmm, I don't think so. I think I'll have to reduce the size of the stone, otherwise I won't have enough space at the bottom to make a good pavilion. Okay, let me decide and we come back again. So I decided to do a different thing. Since I discovered that the material is very easy to work with, um, I'm gonna dop it the other side, make a proper pavilion with the proper angles for the material. So if I have to grind off more of the girl, I will. And But I want to close the stone at the bottom, I don't want a fisheye like this. So I'm just going to dop it from the top touch up the bottom, make it completely new from scratch and then once I turn it we'll see what's left on top and decide if I have to add up some facet only, repolish the ones that I already have there or just recut it from the beginning. That the crown. Okay? Let's see, let's see, let's see. This is a, an adventure. See you soon. I just want to show you again the transferring. You can see it more details in the other video but I think this is cool to see every time I'm hitting it the other side and then while I'm having traction and that's it detached so I transferred the stone because I've been working now in the pavilion. If I can get a bit of focus. Okay. So this is the pavilion. It's very shallow. Critical angle of Kunzite is about 37 degrees. But I want to keep it at least 40. So I'm going to grind at 40 degrees, trying to meet point at the center there. Then we'll have a good reflection. Whatever happens to the girdle, it doesn't matter because I'm allowed to grind the stone to make it more beautiful. So 40 degrees, we cut the top, make three facets on the top I think, and we'll make one facet at 41, or something like that, we're gonna see now. Let's cut. 41, 96 
40 degrees, sorry, 40 degrees, not 41. I want it 40 degrees at least. You see, that's a, that's a facet of 40 degrees. And to reach the top, that's a long way. So that tells you how shallow is the stone. So let's go on, continue. See, I'm still grinding the stone at 40 degrees. You see, I have to reach the top. I have to make these two pass of meat. Then it won't be possible anymore to see the through the stone. It's going to have a, a light reflection, hopefully. Let's go. So now we reached with 40 degrees. We make huge facets, but we're going to break them out. We're going to break them down a bit. Okay, I'll show you now what's left of the girl. <laughs> What's left of the curl? I'm sorry, a bit wobbly. Yeah, pretty much almost nothing. So we're gonna do that again. Okay, let me make some more faceted than the faceting at the pavilion to make it more appealing. And uh, see you soon. See, I'm trying to give some movement to the bottom. I probably, I will leave the sides as that. I'll just give a bit of movement at the bottom, keeping the, the angles. I'm gonna keep 40 for the meeting point at the center and 42 towards the girdle. And we'll leave to the, to the top to do the breaking of the lights reflected on the bottom. So I'll pre-polish and I'll polish it and I'll show you the final result of the pavilion. So, I pre-polished the facet in the pavilion. Um, as you can see, yes, you can see better now. Huh? I give it a bit of movement, and this is a pre-polish. I checked only if the other corners were at least at 40 degrees and they are. That's why I did these little facets on these sides. But I'm going to keep the rest of the facets as they are because I'm not worn out and uh, they are fine. And beyond the, uh, we mean the, within the limits of the refractive index and the critical angles, so they are fine. Now what I'm going to do is, since the girdle line has almost disappeared, I'm going to make it bigger. So I'm going to try to match the previous girdle because I'm gonna, with the, with the kunzite, since they're very delicate, you want to keep a very thick girdle. Otherwise, they're going to split whenever they're going to try to set it. So I'm going to try to match, you see, the previous girdle line. To do so, I'll have to grind this side. So I put 90 degrees to the machine, and I'm just going back now to grind. I'm grinding now the, the girdle. Let's see, without disturbing the cutting, let's go to the external ones. So we can try to match the previous girdle. Let's see. I can't see. So you see the external girdle facets, which will meet the previous one on the other side, see that? So I'll have to go do again the whole the whole girl the whole girl line from scratch at least on these two sides so I'll see you soon okay there we go, the new girdle line. Now I'll polish the facet of the pavilion and we go on from there. Okay, so pretty much done. I'll show you the result. Is it good, huh? 
Okay. So now we turn the stone the other side and we do the crown. Okay. okay. Now we got a straight pavilion. Can you see from the top? That's straight now. Now the top is quite worn out. Um, if you see, as you can see, all the facets that I did earlier, try to save the stone as it was, they're all gone. Or mostly gone. See how skews the stone. And trying to locate again all, every single facet, it's going to be a mission and a loss of time. So what am I going to do? Look at the, ta the table. It's, it's going to have a big scratch in there, so I can't use it, even as it is. I'm not keep it. Um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to just refacet the whole top, and hopefully we're going to have that bright pink, warm pink that uh, the stone shows in one direction throughout the stone. That's our mission to make, to extract beauty. Okay. Let's see. Okay, and this is the restyling of a gem. I will make all the top facets. As you can see, there are some remnants of the previous facets which I'm going to leave there. I'm not interested in losing my material in this. I will have to... You see, the, the table looks not aligned, but once I'll, uh, I'll cut it, I'll grind it again, it's going to get be straight. And it's going to look very nice, I think. Okay, let me pre-polish. I'll show you. Okay, I'm done top. What I'm going to do now is that I don't like the fact that uh, this side and this side originally are not squared with the center of a stone. So I'm going to attach the, the girdle up, make it flat completely. So it's going to look much better. So I put it 90 degrees and I'm going to grind now. See how bad it is. Mm, I'm running the wax. Let's remove it. Yeah, this is the facet. Can you see? completely off-center. It's not square at all. So let's correct that and just a little bit until I reach the what I want. See this is what it takes to spread again the stone. That must be done. I like few stones. Let's see the other side. So this size is better. I don't know, maybe they cut it by hand. I haven't got the clue really. Why? Some stones have to be completely skewed like this. The original shape is flat, so I'm gonna make it flat. I think I'm gonna call it the deal. I don't wanna make it too small. Let's see the result. It's better looking. It looks much better. So I'll have to make some more facets next to the girdle. I'll, mod I'll uh, pass again on the ones this side so that I will equilibrate again the, the girdle. Okay. Okay. Touched it up. Now I'm ready to polish. Okay. 
Okay. You know, I've noticed that um, it polishes very quickly. We just have to keep it a bit more lubricated than the top us. Now we go for the table. Okay, the table is also done. It's polished. I would recommend to keep it kind of lubricated, much more lubricated than any other stone, to avoid vibrations while while polishing the table. Um, you know, straightening up the stone, I increase the thickness of a girl on these sides. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to switch over the stone again and make a little bit of some a couple of facets at the bottom there so that it's going to be easier for the setters to to set it but a very very steep facet just to to prevent the setters to break it yeah but I will just show you the final result I'm not going to go through I will not let you go through the whole procedure is going to be tedious okay so see you soon now the moment of the truth Half a ton. There we go. Now it's closed. The light doesn't leak through anymore. Okay. okay. So all the glory to God. Thank you for watching. So thank you guys for watching, see you next for the next challenge, bye bye.